Lection Cosmetics. They are one of the cheaper like drugstore brands. I tried out their products today. This is what we did. Pretty sure the most expensive thing was like six, seven pounds. Let me double check. Six ninety nine was the most expensive thing. And Superdrug actually have three for two on collection at the moment. So get there. I wanted to see how full glam we could go with a drugstore brand. Did we achieve that? I'll let you guys be the judge. So many goodies for us to try. By the way, just looking at the receipt for all of these products in here, it was £62.16. I already had a couple of products here from collection, so I didn't need to buy like them, but basically for an entire full face, it's around £60. Which, <laughs> baby, you can spend that on one product these days. Shit's expensive. I wanted to try and stick to like my normal brow routine. That way it feels familiar to me and I can kind of make my brows look well attempt to make them look like normal the only product i didn't grab was brow powder but i did pick up a brow pencil and a brow pen so the brow pens oh my god no that's a lip liner what <laughs> there we go <laughs> like i was saying i picked up a brow pencil this is the incredible brow brow definer i got the color dark brunette i believe in all the brow products i picked up the darkest one that they had and then the brow pen is called the incredible brow microblade tip brow pen again i got it in dark brunette hmm. i'm just thinking of the best way to approach this i think what i might do is fill in my brows with a the pencil then use the brow pen to kind of do any brow strokes and kind of bring them back to life what do we think i'm asking you like you can feed back you can't because the camera right what i liked about the brow pencil is it's retractable it's not the thinnest brow pencil in the world but it's not too thick either to be fair though they don't call it micro they literally just call it that um i wonder how creamy this is gonna be okay the only thing i do have on my brows is my got to be glue and then i've carved them out with concealer but apart from that these are the brows so i'm gonna use this to sort of lightly fill in the brow and just start to create some shape. Like I'm just gonna extend that tail. You know what, that's done a pretty good job. I mean, you guys saw, I don't really have a tail on this eyebrow. So the fact that that's just sort of effortlessly filled that in for me, really thickening up that brow for me and creating like base color, which is what I like. Getting that color on there. And then when you go in with a brow pen to create like hairs that don't exist, 10 out of 10. It's actually quite a nice consistency because you can see, I mean, I'm softly applying it, but it's not going too harsh, too quick. It gives you build up time, which is nice. It's filling in the gaps nicely. Another thing, it's a really, really nice shade of brown. It's a nice cool tone brown, which is my favorite. They look more alive. I enjoyed that. Okay, now we're gonna move over to the brow pen. Wowza, that tip. What the fuck? I actually don't think I've ever seen a brow pen with that tip. That is so interesting. Sorry, I'm just hitting you with a beauty guru style here. It's almost a hybrid between like a normal pen tip applicator and then one of those like microbading three tip applicator like fork ones. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like that's, <gasps> whoa. Like, can you, do you see that? That's so interesting. It's like on its side, I can get the three tip ones and then on the tip, I can get the single strokes, meaning I can pick. By the way, it says up to 24 hour wear and it's water resistant apparently as well. Okay. Personally, when it's like multiple tips, I don't like that. I like one stroke, if that makes sense. I find it easier to control. So I'm gonna zoom you in, guys, so you can really see. I should have done that earlier, sorry. Okay, that's the tail. And now I'm gonna switch over to the fork side and just see maybe if I can just roughly run that through the brow as well. Okay, one thing I am noticing is it's definitely sort of running out. Where it's like such a felt tip applicator, I feel like the product is sort of running down the tube. Oh, yeah. Uh, 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 no, no. This. Goodbye. The color of it as well is so weird. It almost looks green in comparison to the pencil. See how that's more of like a brown and this looks more of like a green based brown. Like... This ain't fake tan, babes. <laughs> there are way better brow pens out there from the drugstore. Like the NYX Lift and Snatch is my absolute favorite ever. Like out of all the brow pens. I actually got it half price. So I got it for $2.49. It's normally $4.99. Don't even buy it for $2.49. <laughs> I think I'm going to do eyes before my skin just in case it fucks up. <laughs> better safe than sorry. Guys, I'm thinking maybe like a smoky wing. Like I picked up the gel liner, like a classic sort of smoky shade palette. Haven't done that type of glam in a while. So let's see if collection can pull through. Let's see if we can go full glam with a brand like this. Let's see if we can make full glam affordable. So we're gonna start with the collection lasting color gel liner. On the box, it says it's long lasting. It's an ultra smooth gel eyeliner. It glides on for up to 12 hours of lasting color. That's always what we like to see. I feel like with a gel liner, what I look for is it to be creamy enough to be able to blend, but we want it to set so that it's not budging and moving around throughout the day. We just don't want it to smudge and go everywhere. Um, so, oh my God, it comes with the cutest little brush you've ever seen. <laughs> this is weird. It's been a long time since I've used like gel 
liner. I don't know how to act. Maybe a brush would be a good place to start. I'm gonna use one of these tiny little brushes so we can try and be as precise as possible. Um, I'm just gonna pick up some of the color. Feels nice actually. Just loaded that on there, but I'm gonna take it on my hands just to kind of disperse the product. Looking nice and black and opaque. Right, that was nice and easy. That's nice and opaque as well. Can already see it drying down, so I feel like I need to work with it quick if I wanna smudge it. I have started a little bit smaller as well, which gives me space to be able to like smudge it out, but so far, so good. Now we're gonna take this. This is the Collection Sahara Dunes eye palette. It's a very classic neutral toned palette. There are four shimmers and four mattes. You know what, I'm gonna be brave and I'm gonna hit straight with the black. Straight in there, load it on the brush. This is totally my fault. I think I need a smaller brush to work with first and then buff it out. Let me zoom you in. I don't know why I zoomed you out. I think I thought I was maybe gonna do skin, but smaller brush in with the black, which by the way, this actually seems like a pretty decent black eyeshadow. Yeah, that's way better. See, I'm able to like keep the shape and then I can use like a fluffier brush to blend out in a set. I mean, you can see it's filling in. You'd be able to see if it wasn't opaque enough, like there'd be a gap between the, the gel liner and the shadow. It just wouldn't blend properly. Do you know what I mean? Whereas this seems to be buffing out really, really well. I'm just taking the fluffy brush now, just to sort of soften all those edges. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm even gonna dip into the browns. I might mix the dark brown and the warmer brown together just to create even more of like a gradient. Really just smoke that above. Just gonna take a nice clean fluffy brush. I don't, okay, Jordan, remember you've got shadow on your finger, you dick. Clean fluffy brush just to sort of smoke the edges out. I feel like that's looking nice. Obviously I'm gonna clean it up afterwards, but I'm just gonna take this lighter shade here. That's nice. See how that's just brightening that inner corner up ever so slightly. It's just sort of like neatening up any of the shades. Quick little clean up just to finish that off. Do you know what? It's pretty fucking good. In it. How much was this palette? $4.99 and I actually think that's a really, really cute, like solid sort of staple, everyday, if you're scared of eyeshadows type of palette. I actually think this is really, really cute. I mean, I showed you guys, but the black is pretty decent. Let me swatch some of the other shades. So we've got the dark brown, we've got the sort of warmer toned, like beige nude. Even the lighter shade though, is pretty good. I mean, the shimmers are more of like, mm. of shimmer. <laughs> They're not intense. It's almost like a sheen to the shimmer, if that makes sense. But even the mattes, I feel like that's even worth it for the mattes, to be fair. I feel like I will want to put on a lash, but we'll definitely try out a mascara. Is this new collection Lash Surge? There was a few different ones of this. There was one in like a red, like, like red packet. <laughs> Tube was the word I was looking for, not packet. <laughs> there was also waterproof of this. I wanted to try the original, the OG, which I think is this one. The Lash Surge Full Slash Effect Mascara. Okay, the wand is nice. It's like a soft bristle brush, but it's not too thick or like clumpy. Like there's not a lot of products like clumping on the brush, which I like. I'm not even gonna curl my lashes. I literally just wanna go straight in to see how it can make my natural lashes look. Personally, I don't like a super, super clumpy lash. I don't mind it to be like thick and a little bit like voluptuous, but I don't want it to be super, super clumpy and apply too much product at once. So far, looking pretty good. I can see the product building up, but it's not too much. It's almost like I can choose how much I want to put on there. Like the more I comb through, the better the lashes are looking. Should we double dip? Oh yeah, that's where the thickness is coming through. Do you guys see that? It's kind of hard to see <laughs> under the wing. <laughs> look how thick. Can you guys see how thick that's made my natural lash look? That really ain't bad. I feel like it's one of those mascaras you've got control over. You can choose how thick you want them to be. Dunk in again, layer it up, do your thing. Not blowing me away, but then it takes a lot from mascara to blow me away. Right, it's time for me to go off camera. I'm gonna apply a lash to this eye. I'm gonna do the same thing to this eye. The eyes can be finished off later, but then we're gonna jump into the fun stuff, which is the skin. I'm excited about this. Can this affordable brand make our skin look like she's expensive? Let's see. Priming as always to start, and I am gonna use a product that has been recently raved about because this is a dupe for a Charlotte Tilbury product. This is the Collection, the <laughs> Gorgeous Glow Filter Finish Complexion Boosting Primer and Illuminator. It even has the same applicator. One that you literally just like pop all over. Now this is in the shade Medium 3. It looks crazy. 
in the tube. On the skin, it almost just sort of like buffs and blurs out. Like the color almost like buffs out, you'll see. Which by the way, if you couldn't tell by the way I'm talking about it, I have used this before. The height was there, I had to get my hands on it and try it. I do actually have the color that's lighter than this, but I'm not sure where it is right now. I believe that one's light medium, which is a nice sort of in-between color. But if you are tanned, promise this isn't as intimidating as you think. So I'm just gonna apply this everywhere except the T-zone. I have another primer to try there, so we're gonna avoid that for now. Right now it looks very orange. I know, don't worry, blend. The more you buff out this product, you can see the more the color, I mean, look, like it looks intense there, but it does just buff out. Like I said, if you use fake tan, I feel like this is a really, really gorge color. Yes, it's more on the like ready side, but some fake tans are, so I don't find that to be a problem. And can you see the glow that this gives the skin? It's, uh, it's pretty intense. You know, this product is not shy with the glow. I actually think this could be a little bit glowier than the Charlotte Tilbury. I think it's gorgeous. I feel like my skin suddenly looks alive. I think it's a really nice product as well if you do want to add a teeny bit of a tint to your skin as well as the glow, this is the product for you. Priming wise, I'm not going to say that this is going to be something that's going to hold your makeup, make it last longer, but what it is going to do is tint the complexion and add the glowiness if that's what you're about. Wowza, it is fucking hot in this room. It's about 50 million degrees, but I'm committed. To you. Let's move on into a little bit of concealing, like spot concealing before I do foundation. So they have this little pot concealer here, which is the Last Imperfection Stretch Concealer. It actually says that it's an eyeshadow primer as well, which is kind of interesting. Reason I picked this up is because I am hoping, I am hoping, because I've not yet found one, that this is gonna be a dupe for my NARS Soft Matte Pot Concealer, my favorite pot concealer ever. It is just the best, it's the perfect consistency. Ladies, if this is a dupe, we could be onto a winner. Heads up, this is in the shade Cashew. It actually looks like a pretty good shade, so I'm just gonna take a flat brush and just pick up some of the product. Oh, it's kind of a little bit too sort of wet instantly. I can tell just from picking it up and filling it in the pot like that, like, can you see the shine? in the concealer. Like it's definitely more of like a wet, creamy formula. Yeah, okay. Mm, I'm after something more matte. Like I feel like that's what gives the hold and the coverage. I don't know. I mean, this could be banging. Like I could be speaking too soon, but. Now let's move on to foundation. I bought two different types of foundation. I bought a matte version and a glow version. I would typically probably go more for the matte foundation, but I feel like a lot of you might like the glowy one. I don't know, I know a lot of people prefer that these days. So here is the glow one. It's the Last Imperfection Glow Foundation. It says on it probiotic technology, whatever that is, but it says it's got a dewy finish. It gives a balanced and smoothing effect on the skin. And apparently it's a lightweight formula as well. This one I picked up in the shade 13 Praline, which I seriously have my fingers crossed that this is gonna work and not be too dark. In Superdrug, the shade range on both of these foundations was shocking. I need to look online. Is there more shades online? If there's not, collection, sort your shit out. That's all I'm gonna say. Here's the matte one, guys. It's the Last Imperfection Matte Foundation. It says it's got SPF 30 in, and apparently it's six in one. So it says it primes, conceals, covers, smooths, protects, and mattifies. War resistant, transfer proof, and full coverage. That is a very me foundation. Okay, hold up. The fact that I almost forgot this, I said I wanted to use another primer. <laughs> I should still be able to use it in the T-zone, so it'll be fine. But this is the Last Imperfection Putty Primer. This is giving me very much e.l.f. I like that primer. Let's see if Collection does the same type of thing. So it just says it's a poreless finish and it's hydrating at the same time. Grabbing a chunk. Feels very similar. It's got that sort of, I mean, putty. <laughs> Consistency. Just gonna keep this to the T-zone right here. Do you know what? It has a very similar consistency. It almost starts to melt into the skin. It's a bit of a funky smell. Like it smells a bit, smells a bit Play-Doh-y. <laughs> it's a little, I don't wanna say they were greasier, but almost. Feels a little more wet than the e.l.f. one, but we'll see. Back to the foundation. The matte one is calling my name, guys. Maybe I'll show a little bit of the glow just to see. You already know I was gonna pick this when I was reading out the claims of this. I mean, come on. If I don't use the glow one, maybe I could use this on like a TikTok or in another YouTube video, so keep an eye out for that. Same for this one. I got the shade Praline 13, which please be okay. <gasps> okay, I think we're good. Looks like a nice fake tan shade. I'm just hoping it doesn't oxidize. We're gonna take this to blend it out. My favorite sponge ever, but this is one of her like fun mystery ones. This is the Coco Cosmetics by Chloe Marshmallow Sponge. And guys, look, I got the banana shake one. I got the yellow. The other colors you can get are strawberry laces, grape sherbet, chocolate lime, bubblegum bonbon, and licorice twist. And I think if you get the black one, you get like a voucher, if that's still a thing. But these are cute because you don't know what color you're gonna get. It's like fun, 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 fun. Be right back, just gonna go dampen this. Look how big this goes. Like, it is huge. <laughs> this is a tool I like, so this is gonna be all about how the foundation performs. So, let's go. 
looking nice. I would definitely say that this is more of a like medium coverage. There's also a very strong scent. I'm not too sure what it smells like, but it seems to be blending in beautifully. I mean, right now it doesn't look too matte. If anything, it's still got a bit of like glow to it. Mind you, I do have obviously the glowy skin product underneath. Once it dries down, we can see how it sets and the finish that we get. But I mean, it's looking beautiful. Matte foundations, you have to be careful because I feel like they can go one of two ways. They either go way too matte and they almost look clay-like and dry out your skin, it's really strange. Then you get the good side where it gives you the coverage, but it's still, it just sits on the skin beautifully. I am having to use a little bit more product than I'd like to. I mean, it could be the fact that I have got a new sponge, but this sponge is great. So maybe because it's a medium coverage, I'm just going in with more, you know, just because that's just what I like. But the way it's blending as well, it is actually a little bit more on the thicker side for a foundation. Like, can you see the way that that's like chilling on the sponge it melts in though when you blend it which i'm loving i'm just seeing if i can build that up even more i'm not that i really need to i'm just intrigued to see how buildable it is for a foundation guys what the fuck this is looking great the shade as well can we talk about it really nice undertone if you fake tan this is a really really nice option fresh little pump let's see if it is oxidized i don't think it has look when you blend it in it just melts in. It's like a natural matte foundation. It's so interesting. Honestly, I'm loving the way that this is looking right now. Let's see how things layer up. Just a heads up as well, this foundation is literally $6.99. Yeah, I'm just hoping it don't melt off. Guys, it's so hot in here. Seriously, how am I meant to live, laugh, love in these conditions? <laughs> Jumping into concealer, this is the Collection Last Imperfection Hydrating Serum Concealer. This is their newest one. They have an original and they have the Hydrating Serum one, but I thought we'd try this scene as it's new. So I picked up shade 3 Ivory and also 2 Porcelain again. The shades mm, weren't the best. I always like to pick up a super, super bright one because you guys know I like that bright under eye. But the concealer that was sort of like middle of the range was almost like my foundation shade. So I went for this. We'll see, we'll see. Okay, it's definitely a bit, a little bit light. I feel like I'm not even gonna need that brighter color, but we'll see. This feels lovely, by the way. The serum part, I'm understanding, but can you see like the color, like the coverage? As I'm applying it, it's like opaque. So it's applying a really, really nice amount of concealer. Starting with a brush and then if I need to, I can go in with the sponge afterwards. But I'm intrigued to see the, the coverage of this. A serum concealer. You know, like, I don't know. It's just different to anything I'd normally use. Under the eyes is always the place that you can tell, you know, the coverage of a concealer. Making sure that's on the side of the nose and then dragging it all the way back to just underneath that wing. Guys, what do we think? I'm thinking that looks pretty good. So creamy, but it seems to have its coverage at the same time. Like for a serum concealer, I was worried it might feel too wet or too sticky or just not have coverage, like almost too lightweight for what I would like. Baby, this has coverage. Obviously I've not completely buffed out the edges yet. I'm gonna do that in a second with a sponge, but look how bright. I'm like, ugh, yes. I'm actually just gonna take one of my box beautiful mini blenders, guys. Look how fucking cute this is. Eight blenders in one, sick. Quick little dampen on the baby blender. This concealer is great. Oh my God. The way that it's sitting on the skin. Like, I feel like as well, it's setting down. Like, it's not staying glowy, which I really, really like. As in, it just seems to... I don't know. I was expecting it to stay really glowy and, like, wet. But, wow. Wow, wow, wow. That is bloody great. Do I go in with a little lighter? Do I just... Maybe a little. Let's just hit here. I'm gonna leave that to sit while I do cream contour. Now, they did actually have this sort of, like, glow stick, and they had it in, like, a contour shade, a blush shade, and a highlight shade. The idea of a glowy contour to me, like a cream contour, makes no sense, so I didn't pick it up. I also didn't pick up the cream blush or highlighter because they'd all been used. If you're that person, that's what I say. But I did pick a darker concealer up. So this is the original Last Imperfection concealer, so not the serum one. This one is in the shade Honey 15, which looks like a really, really nice, like, bronze warm shade. I've used concealer as cream contour before, so the idea to me isn't weird. I'm even gonna use this for my nose contour. blending nice. I mean, I would have been surprised if it didn't because it is a concealer. I was more concerned about the shade and if it looked kind of muddy on the skin. I think that looks beautiful. It's just blended and bronzed out the skin. So easy as well. Hasn't stuck to the foundation. It's blending on top of it beautifully. Let's do this nose contour. 
I felt like that was a perfect time to blend out that contour because it definitely was starting to dry. It almost dried down enough though for like my nose contour where I can keep the placement, keeping the contour lines, do you know what I mean? And look, it's just like blended out for me. Why? Why do I love that? But that made my nose contour so easy. You saw that, right? Like you saw how easy that just, oh wow. Complexion woke up and said, here you go. And I mean it this time. I love both of them. I actually think I did them the right way round. Like I like the serum underneath the eye and on the skin. And I like this one for the cream console. Like that sort of like a little bit more matte formula. Unfortunately, like I said, I don't have any cream blush. So we're gonna go straight into setting the skin. So this one I already had in my collection that I've not tried. This is the Last Imperfection Sheer Loose Powder. Now this is in the banana shade, which I'm hoping it will work out. But I do also have this one here, which is the Last Imperfection Ultimate Wear Powder. Get full flawless coverage. So I assume this is more like a powder foundation formula. We'll see. This is in medium, by the way. Tap in some of the loose. That's what we're going to start with. I said some. <laughs> the whole pot, apparently. <laughs> it's actually not too creased, to be fair, but I'm just going to extra tap that out to make sure. Usual method, Trigwell Cosmetics, a powder puff. I'm going to pick some up and then tap it on here. Press this into the skin. I'm really hoping this isn't too yellow. I am going to leave a little bit down my nose to do its thing. And then everywhere else, I'm going to pat in. Whoa. Um, how smooth does that look? Wait a damn minute. There is no way that this powder has made my skin look that smooth. The only thing that I don't like about it is the fact that it's dulled down the brightness a little bit, but it is a banana powder. Like I'm not using something fair. The good news is though, is it's not too banana-y. Like it's not too yellow. So it's not like you have to have either like a deeper complexion or a more olivey skin tone to use it. Like you can, you can get away with it. Obviously it definitely has a banana -y tint, which is nice cause you want it to do that, but it's not one of those like darker, deep um, banana powders. So I feel like a variety of skin tones could use this. Now let's take this one. How cute is this by the way? It even comes with a mirror and a powder puff. Makes it good for on the go and travel. I am gonna use my own like brush though cause I wanna use this everywhere. Hopefully. This color is okay. I'm gonna use this to press in that bake that we left as well. It's actually a very matte powder. I mean, it does say that, right? Yeah, matte, it literally, <laughs> it does say it. You know the type of powder you can almost feel on the skin? Like even though it's a pressed powder, I mean, I am going in to be fair, like I'm putting a generous amount, but it's more matte, you can feel it on the skin. It's almost more like heavy duty, which isn't a bad thing. It just depends on your skin type and if you'd like that. I feel like the loose powder is a little bit more forgiving, a little bit lighter. This is definitely more like heavy duty. But then again, it says it's meant to be the ultimate wear powder. I'm assuming it's really gonna lock everything in, keep everything on the skin. Guys, now that I'm looking, I feel like this powder, yeah, is a little bit gray. This one? not so keen on. The banana one, I think it looks great. There's a tiny little patch here, I don't know where that's from. There isn't anything on this side, so I don't know if that's the powder or if there's just like a little patch on my skin that's gone a little bit funny. This powder, the loose one, it looks great on the skin. This one, I'd give a miss. I'm gonna need this bronzer because I feel like I'm looking a little like, ugh, now. <laughs> this is the Bronze Glow. It's enriched with vitamin E and it's apparently coconut scent. Wow, holy shit, that is coconut. This is in light terracotta number two, by the way. I saw another shade, but it was a lot more warm, like very, very, almost like orangey, whereas this still is warm, but just less intense. Maybe let's do one side than the other so we can really see the difference. Just tapping that over the top of where we already had that cream contour. It's actually quite like, you can really dip in. That could be because I picked the lighter shade though, as opposed to like, the pigment. This shade seems to be more of that like yellowy kind of bronze. I feel like I'm really able to, to build up. Like it's quite a forgiving bronzer. Another thing I really enjoy is the fact that this product is matte. I do actually think that I could have gone for the more warmer shade now that I'm looking at it on my skin. It doesn't look bad at all. I do think it would have maybe been more up my street. Having said that though, it's definitely brought some color back to the skin. It looks natural. Like it's a nice sort of natural shade. Right, I think we can move on to blush. Here it is. So they had a few different colors. I of course went for the more pinky blush. This is the blush. That's it. <laughs> Shade two, bashful, by the way. Add a pop of color to your cheeks with this highly pigmented blendable blusher. It says it's pigmented and I'm actually hoping it is because you guys know I love my blush. Layer number two. Oh, uh, how cute. This is a really cute shade of pink, you know? Like it's not like too pink and in your face, but like it's pink enough. Imagine if you like wanted to get into pink blushes, but you didn't want anything too like Barbie pink. You wanted that cute pop. This is exactly what this is gonna do. Like, look at that. How cute. I mean, I really layer up the blush. Can you guys see? The blush actually has like a bit of a glow to it. 
like a bit of a sheen. It's not a matte formula, like it has a little bit of a sheen, but that looks cute. I feel like it's sort of like made the skin look a little bit more healthy. It's not an intense glow, like you could definitely still apply highlighter with it. It's just got a cute little sheen. That's nice, that's nice. Speaking of highlighter, this was actually the only highlighter I found. Tell me this is not Charlotte Tilbs. <laughs> There's a contour and a highlighter. I don't know if to use that contour. I feel like I'm scared it might like make everything a little bit patchy and a little bit muddy. May avoid. Maybe we should just use the highlighter in this. This is the only highlighter I saw to be fair. Sculpt and Highlight Contour Kit this i think there's only one shade actually it's even got like the imprint like the charlotte tilbury one like the hollywood like thing you know what i'm talking about shade looks nice though it looks like a nice um like champagne very soft like it's a very sort of subtle Highlighter. The only thing I will say is there's a little bit of shadowing. Like it's a little bit of a white cast. Probably a little bit too light for my skin tone. If you're any darker than me, I feel like this is going to be an absolute no-no. The sheen on it though is really, really soft. I feel like if you don't like intense highlighters, you will really, really enjoy that. Very soft. Like it's a very just soft glow to the skin. Like it catches the light really nicely. And there's no glitter or anything like that, which obviously is... A solid bonus. That's cute. You just gotta be careful of your skin tone. And the, the contour, that's quite dark. Like it's very interesting because you've got quite a light highlighter and then quite a like dark contour. Bearing in mind the highlighter is quite light. Would someone, me and Farah, want something this dark? I'm not sure. I feel like they need several colors, like several combinations of this, not just the one. It looks nice on the skin though, so. <laughs> skin is done. I think it's time for lips, right? I'm back. I did go ahead and finish up the eyes, guys. I actually used the gel liner in the waterline, and look at that, really stuck. Like it's really dark, that could be the new move guys. And then I also blurred it out with the black from the palette just a little bit. And I used this same uh, gel liner to do my little mouths too. Now for the lips, did I pick a very classic sort of Jordan Lipscomb nude lip combo? Yes, I did. I feel like nude you guys would be the most interested in as well. Cause like imagine we find like an affordable, like nice drugstore nude lip combo. They're out there. Maybe collection can can do that for us. We'll see. Just a heads up, they didn't have many like color options. There's like four or five different liners, the same for the lipstick, the same for the liquid lipstick. Not a lot of choice. Like you have like a nude lip, a red lip, a pink lip. You know what I mean? This with the nude liner they had is the lip definer. This is in cappuccino. I do like the fact that it's retractable. Like that's nice. Nice, that's really pigmented and it's really creamy as well. Not like in a wet, slippy way, but in a, you can see the color kind of way. I'm just gonna fill in my lips a little bit. It's not the normal nude lip liner color I'd go for, but I also don't hate it. It's kind of like a, like a deeper version of my lip color. I actually decided to go for the liquid lipstick rather than the bullet lipstick. I preferred the color of this, well, I hope I do. Not that I'm judging either, but the more like affordable drugstore makeup, like the bullet lipsticks always like feel the same. They're not like creamy. <laughs> Let's see this formula. This is the Last Imperfection Matte Liquid Lipstick. It says there's hyaluronic acid in here as well, so hopefully it should be a nice hydrating liquid lipstick. And there's vitamin E and vitamin B5 in here too. It'll be interesting to see if this dries down. The shade, by the way, is Secretive, number two. Wow, it's super, super, like, like, wet. I know that sounds weird, but it's a really thin, kind of, like, wet formula like a cute little like baby pink thinner liquid lipsticks i way prefer because they don't feel as heavy on the lips they're more comfortable to wear hopefully this one dries down and sort of like stays in place and lasts all day i feel like if you like a super kind of like pinky nude lipstick this is cute i won't lie i'm kind of like fighting off the temptation to put like a lighter color in the middle teeny bit too baby pinky for me personally one thing i will say is how nice does that liquid lipstick look on the lips like, you know when your lips look almost like velvety matte? Ew. Okay, right, let's top it with the gloss. Oh god, my hair's looking all types of crazy. Right, let's do this gloss. Collection Pump Me Up. This is the High Shine Plumping Lip Gloss. Apparently there's an instant plumping effect. It's ultra glossy, but not sticky. And there's a fresh mint scent. Yep. Wowza. She is glossy. I did actually prefer it than that to be honest, but I just want to see how this lip plumper works. Is it one of those ones that stings? Does it just have a light tingle? The mint is nice though. It's almost like fresh and like cold feeling. I will probably take this off in a second though, guys, because I feel like I prefer the whole look matte, but I just want to give it a go. Hmm. So far so good. It feels like a light little on my lips. <laughs> While we're waiting to see if that does anything, I have setting spray, guys. They had a matte one and an illuminating one. I picked up the illuminating one. This is the makeup fixing spray. 
That spritz is lovely. It's like a really nice, like fine, I know it sounds quite aggressive, <laughs> but it's actually quite a nice, like fine mist. Feels nice and damp too. I'm hoping that will sort of like melt all the powders and finish off the skin. Do my lips look plumper? Maybe a little. It doesn't hurt at all. It just feels kind of cold, really. Like there's a really light tingle. Like it's not one of those intense lip plumpers that literally take your lips from this to this. I know a lot of people hate them though because they find them just too intense on the lips. This one isn't intense at all and it gives you like a little, a little something. That is everything from collection. I'm just gonna sort this mane out and then we can discuss the rest. God, I really do need to go sort this out. Okay, <laughs> guys, we are done. I just quickly scraped back the hair because I am melting. What do we think though of the makeup look? Do you think we achieved that glam with such affordable products? I absolutely think we did that. I think the biggest thing out of this video that I'm impressed by is the skin. Like the skin products have genuinely surprised me. They look so good. So good. In fact, I'm gonna film a clip on my phone so I can include it in. I don't use any filters or anything on here anyway, but just so you can see it from like a different camera, because obviously under the lights and stuff, it does look a little bit different. Guys, look, no filters, no nothing. This is literally how the skin looks. And the eyes, everything. This was not a flop. But maybe the lip combo, like the lip color. It was more the lip color. I like the formulas of the products, but the lip color was not really my kind of thing. Apart from that, and the powder, actually, you know, the pressed powder. I liked everything. And what I'm gonna do for you guys is I'm gonna put a list below of all the products and the ones with a star next to, they're my absolute favorite and like you need. If you're going into super drug boots, you're looking at this brand and you're wondering what to get, they're the products below. I'm so impressed. Like, collection, babes. They remind me of a childhood brand, but now I feel like they're really kind of coming back, especially with their newer products. They're entering the game, fair play. Fair fucking play. That's me done. I hope you enjoyed this full face makeup look. Let me know below, by the way, guys, what other full face brands you want to see. I'm thinking Elf. I'm thinking Morphe. I want to do She Glam, Shein's makeup brand. I want to do ColourPop, maybe. Any ideas you have, please let me know below. That's it. Thank you for watching. Go save some pennies. Okay, go. <laughs>